A while ago, I made a video about a loose neutral fault and how it's a very deadly fault. In the video, I tried to explain how it works, how to detect it and why it's so dangerous. In this video, I want to actually do a bench demonstration uh, using some light bulbs and an RCD and show how it won't trip an RCD. And hopefully this helps you understand how it works. So that while I'm doing my test here, I'm not tripping the RCD in the house. I'm not going to use the earth. Uh, coming from the mains, I'm going to just twist, use the neutral. So I'm just combining them here. This is for test purposes only, and I am a qualified electrician. A little bit of clarification that I forgot to give when I was recording this. We're talking here about the main neutral, not the neutral on any sub-circuits. It's got to be the neutral before the MEN link, as we call it in New Zealand. I can't remember what it's called in the UK, uh, but basically the neutral and the earth are connected in our switchboards. If the neutral has any integrity issues before that point, that's when you can get voltage on your earthing system and that can be deadly. This lamp holder here, I'm gonna connect to earth, well, to neutral, but this is gonna represent, I'm gonna put a bulb in here and how much it lights up will be indicative of the voltage that could potentially go through a person under the fault conditions that we're simulating here today. I'll also be measuring the voltage. I don't think this is gonna be very pretty, but um, uh, hopefully it'll be a good demonstration. This one here is gonna be simulating our earth neutral fault. That's right, I wanna have this as a switch that'll effectively bypass this. How do I set that up? Okay, I think we've got the board all set up. Here it is here. I've figured out that the screws I was using were a little too long for the thickness of the board, so I placed some little bits of wood down here uh, to protect the table. And here we go. I'm about to switch it on. So first I'll explain how it's supposed to work. We've got mains power coming in here. Uh, I've earthed this power point. I'm going to I'm only gonna be using it to plug in a double insulated heat gun, but um, it's just always a rule. I always wear something that's got an earth something if it's got an earth pin. So this one is going to act like our person. Uh, you probably want to see my face. Um, so this will simulate the voltage that could be going through a person under these kind of fault conditions. So if the bulb lights up, that's bad because you're not supposed to have voltage here. How that's connected is we've got uh, I didn't use this earth terminal other than for that there, which isn't actually going to be used at all. So that's earth through our neutral because I don't want to trip the RCD back at the house. This RCD is going to show us how an RCD will not protect you against this kind of bolt, uh, fault. There's going to be current flowing through this bulb and the RCD will not trip. Uh, later on, I'll switch it around so that we're using the RCD in the house and I'll show how if you had an entire installation RCD, if the RCD was before the earth neutral fault, then it would protect you. Um, so yeah, how that's connected is it's just connected to our main neutral, and then it's the other end of it's connected on the other side of this bulb. This bulb here is gonna be simulating our earth neutral fault. So what this will represent is mains cable comes into the house, goes to a connection. That connection is bad, a hot connection, loose connection. Um, it's got burnt and, uh, has ended up having a volt drop across it. So the bulb I put in here will simulate that by having some resistance. And then it goes through the RCD and then these are gonna be our loads. So I'm gonna show how, like this bulb will be dim and then when we add more load, that bulb will go even more dim. And that'll, that's one way you can detect this sort of fault because the more current, it's like a voltage divider. The more current you pass through a resistor, the more volt drop you get across that resistor. So uh, I'll put some bulbs in and then I'll plug it in. I've got different wattage bulbs to simulate um, what, it would, what it's like if you have different levels of resistance here. So the lower the wattage of the bulb, the higher the resistance. So it's gonna let less current through. I'm not gonna damage these bulbs at all because all I'm doing is creating a voltage divider uh, the bulbs are only ever getting the same or less voltage than what they're rated for. And uh, I've got two different different ones here. So let's start with one bulb here. And uh, that'll simulate the fault. So I'm ready to plug this in. 
and nothing lights up. Oh, okay, I see what's happened. I've plugged this into my vacuum, which I thought was just, oh, it's like a free extension lead. It turns out this vacuum is uh, the outlet's designed that when you draw current through it, it runs so you can use it with a tool. So I'm gonna go get another extension lead. Okay, I am ready to turn this on and there's no current flowing. You can see there's a little bit of current flowing here. If I turn this on, that turns off and that one goes bright. The reason that happens is because this switch bypasses our little bulb here. Uh, so, you know, I've got to, let me show this. That's going to get hot if I leave that on. Um, yeah, so how I've wired this, is that in focus? is uh, this wire here. It's bridged with one end of this bulb and it's connected directly to the neutral. So when I switch that on, you get the neutral coming all the way into this RCD and then going to the bulb. When I switch it off, the neutral here has to go through this light bulb. And that's why you get a dim light there and a dim light there. Now that's this is 60 watt and that's 100 watt. If I change it so that they're uh, the same, If I change it so these are the same, then you'll just get a simple voltage divider effect. If I've got another 60 watt, yeah. And they'll both be the same brightness. Will they? What's going on? Um, now I need to make sense of what's happening here. I'm a little confused. This isn't behaving the way I thought. So when I turn that on, that goes full bright. When I've got this off, th these two are glowing half. That's probably just an artifact or something I didn't intend. And then when I put this one on, that one goes. So this is a 60 and that's a 60. I don't know why that one's growing brighter though. I need to stop and think about this. Okay, I've worked it out. So these two bulbs are now in parallel. So this bulb was messing with it. So if I take this bulb out, so this bulb simulates a person getting an electric shock. So if I take this out, it goes back to acting the way I thought it should. So these two are equal brightness. I gotta be careful not to let these get hot, otherwise I won't be able to change them. Oh yeah, an interesting thing, another thing to show is if I add another bulb here. Oh yeah, I've got that on, yeah. If I add another bulb here, that one should get dimmer. Yeah. Why does this one get brighter? That's not what I expected. Oh yeah, I know why this one gets brighter. When I put this one, I'm just basically making a demonstration of a voltage divider, but that's what an earth neutral fault is. So when I put this bulb here, this one gets brighter because these are in parallel. So they've got a little bit of current flowing through them each. So there's, the amount of current flowing through here is double what's flowing. It's the total amount of what's flowing through each of these. That bulb getting brighter actually represents another thing that's going on with a loose neutral fault, which is heat build up at the loose neutral point. So that loose connection, when you run more current through it, it gets hotter and hotter. And that's also a fire hazard, as well as doing more damage to the connection. And uh, what I wanted to show is one way you can... Um, Detect an earth neutral fault is, I mean, when people have an older style of bulb, it works if they've got incandescent bulbs and then you turn the oven on, the lights get dimmer. So you normally don't see that one, but you can see that light gets dimmer when I put this one in. That's one way you detect it. But these days with LEDs, it doesn't work because they've got an electronic driver inside and the way it responds is quite different. So turn that off and then I was gonna, I put the socket outlet here because I also wanted to do it with a heat gun. But now I think there's no point in doing that because already when I just have, because the, the heat guns and even uh, these resistors put 60 watt through, they're basically just a resistor. Uh, you might wanna see 
see me maybe. Um, they're basically just a resistor. So if I put a heat gun there, it's also just a resistor. It's just one that draws even more watts. So this is a 60 watt resistor at 230 watts. That's a 2000 watt resistor at 30 watt, but this is just 60 watt bulbs. Like I've got, got a hundred watt here. Which bulbs have I got out? Yeah, I got 100 watt here. I wonder if, you can't distinguish when the two of them are here what the, but you can see if we've got the 60 watt and the 100 watt, this one will be different brightnesses. Yeah, see that's equal. And that's this one's much brighter. And then even more brighter. If I put the heat gun in, it would almost, that would pretty much be running at full brightness. But now we want to measure the voltage. That's where this is going to get um, a little bit more informative. Now this doesn't really simulate real world situations because these are just light bulbs, right? The resistances and the amount of current flowing, like this whole thing's drawing less than 10 amps. I've got 60 watt light bulbs, right? Um, the most I can get is the sum of the wattage of the light bulbs out of this 10 amp plug and if I drew more than 10 amps I'd <laughs> uh, it's dangerous because that thing would overheat but see we got 230 volts coming in and then when I switch this on and we have that bulb lit up so this is my earth point so this is a person is connected to earth you're standing uh, then our neutral going into here we've got 200 volts there uh, if I take one of these bulbs out, so that's reducing the amount of current. So when an earth neutral fault happens, the danger is there when current is flowing because of the voltage divider. If you have no current going across it, you don't get the volt drop and it's fine. So now I've got 116 volts. If I turn, turn the um, flow of current off completely, I get zero volts. So... Uh, like if I go to an earth neutral fault off and go switch the oven on, first of all, I'll tell people don't touch anything because you could be getting shocks off the oven. Um, but I'll switch the oven on and then I'll go and measure the voltage. If I measure below 180 volts, often when I've been to earth neutral faults, I've measured 180 volts, which means you've got 50 volts on your tap. Uh, if, if your pipes and your, if your plumbing pipes are earth on the frame of your oven, on the frame of your heater, anything that's earth. So yeah, right now we got nothing. But the moment, see, we can try this with a bigger bulb too, and we'll get even more voltage. The moment I put that current on again. Okay, we've got 66 volts there. Oh yeah, when I increase the, um, it's the other way around. When I put a 100 watt bulb here, we get it's less resistance and a higher wattage bulb. So that's, in effect, a less bad loose connection. But now you can see I've, I've wired the circuit with an RCD. So when I turn that on, we, we lose, when you get your prop, when this is on, we've got our neutral connection intact. And then we go over here, we don't get any voltage. If I put a bulb in here, it doesn't light up because there's no voltage. Turn that off. Um, I've got 46 volts there. That's the kind of reading you would get at a normal earth neutral fault. So there's 50 volts across this light bulb, 50 volts across this light bulb. If I take that one out, these two um, bulbs are effect wired in parallel. So I sort of drew out the circuit and it was, I thought it didn't make sense and now I can see what my intuition was getting at, that these bulbs are just in parallel. So they basically do the same thing as one another. But yeah, turn that on and we lose our voltage. So I'm not sure what else there is to say. Oh, so I will swap this wire over so that we're not bypassing our neutral, our um, main earth. And then we'll see the RCD at the main switchboard and the house is gonna trip. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what else there is to say. I hope that's informative, but I'll just, you can see this RCD is working when I push the test button. But because of the nature of this fault, where it's before the RCD, how the new RCD works is it's looking for it's measuring the amount of current flowing uh, in the earth and the neutral, and it's making sure that it's balanced. So right now we've got a balanced load because all of the current throwing through that bulb is flowing through the RCD and then back through the RCD on the way out. Um, if the RCD were installed on this side of these two bulbs, 
then it would trip. Um, so this is one reason why a loose neutral fault is very dangerous. So I will turn the power off, make sure it's unplugged, and then I'm gonna swap this over so that the RCD in the house is gonna trip. I can't be bothered wiring this up with another RCD here. I thought there's an RCD in the, this installation and it will, it will do the same thing. Just means I'll have to get up and go and reset it. Okay, so now this bulb is gonna act as a, either you can call it a fault to earth or or someone getting an electric shock. So this is gonna, when I put a bulb in there, the RCD will trip. So we'll start with one in here. And if I'm thinking about this right, our RCD won't trip. Yeah, we just got a voltage divider. But if I put a bulb in here, which will be what happens when somebody gets an electric shock, because the RCD is now upstream of everything that's happening here, the RCD will trip. Yeah, the RCD is tripped. So that's probably all I need to show. You can see we've lost power. I'll go reset it, but I don't think I need to show that multiple times. Uh, to have an RCD doing that, you'd have to have an RCD before the fault. So this bulb here is our simulating our fault. And um, because we've got the RCD before all of this, it works. Uh, if that's not clear, maybe I can make another video explaining it. But yeah, I hope that helps. So uh, I'm Alex Gallagher, an electrician in Auckland. Uh, if you've got any other ideas for faults videos you want me to make, let me know. And I'll catch you in the next one.